Hello everyone, and welcome to Gossip Railworks. My name is James, and today we're doing another locomotive review. This one being the Graham Ferris NMS Fairburn tank, which is a 264 tank engine. This looks rather nice. But first of all, let's get all the boring bits out of the way. Uh, first of all, here is the ooh, here's the box, and the product code is 372750 Fairburn 264 tank engine. Uh, running number is 2691 in LMS Black and it is DCC6 uh, compatible. Uh, you can get this in other liveries. Uh, I did actually have a Fairburn tank in a different livery before but uh, I got rid of it eight ago and then decided to get this one. But uh, yeah, you can get it in uh, BR Black, uh, Late and Early Crest, LMS Black and also a very strange limited edition one of uh, I think it's Candelanium Blue or something like that. Very strange colour and uh, like I said it's only a limited this one so we won't see that very often. Anyway, inside the box you do get the usual warranty which is here and we won't have a look at it because um, well there's no real point to have a look at it. Uh, on the inside you also get the exploded diagram which shows you all the bits and pieces on the inside of the uh, locomotive and also the, where the screws are, which is also important to know. Uh, running in, which is about now each way or about half hour if you don't really want to do. Uh, curves, it runs at best on second radius. Uh, body removal, which we had a look in before. Uh, lubrication and DCC fitting as well. And also where all the uh, add on parts live as well. Yeah, like I said, the DCC decoder is right here in the cab. You do, you might be able to do, uh, fit the decoder with just removing the front of the body off, but I recommend taking all of it off because it is a bit of a very awkward angle sometimes. And uh, like I said, the detail pack has all the little bits and pieces. There is a longer coupling hook, which is strange to have that in there, but uh, also got some fake uh, coupling hooks to add on the end. Uh, some, let me have a quick look at what there was. Uh, drain cocks, two of them, coupling hooks, we've got that, vacuum piping, and maybe a few other little bits and bobs in there as well. And as always, I won't do that, I won't put that in there either. Anyway, let's have a quick look at how much this weighs. Wait for that to load up, there we go. It weighs, very carefully pop that in there. 65.7 grams so that's uh you know, it's just over double a mark one coat it is 25 grams roughly and uh yeah it's a rather nice little tank engine however i will have to point point out i do not like this rear bogey it wobbles and flies around all over the place which is the reason why I got rid of my first one in the first place because I didn't like this and uh, traded it for a different uh, locomotive. But uh, when I started collecting LMS locos as well, I had to get one of these really. So but, yeah, I had to put up with this, which I really don't like. But otherwise, it's a very nicely well detailed loco. But it does have NEM pockets either end. Uh, the only has six wheel pickups, which is on the driving wheels here. And uh, so there isn't a very slight bit of interior detail, which is a bit difficult to see on the camera, but it is there, but it is not painted. But uh, yeah, it's a very difficult thing to see. So it's only, you can only see it if you're looking for it. You will not see it uh, when, when the model is running around. It has got riveting all over the body, which is very nice. Uh, just putting it a bit closer and just about see it with the light signing off it. Uh, it has got the usual tampo printing all over the place and it is looking mostly, as far as I can see, it's very spot on. Uh, the uh, safety valves do feel, well, they are separately fitted, but I don't know if they're metal, they probably. They feel metal, but uh, I don't really want to do anything in case it breaks off and I have to try and fix it later. Uh, it does have the rear uh, vacuum pipe already fitted and has, uh, so, as the usual, like I said, the uh, power rating just underneath the cab window, 
and that light is annoying me again. Um, <laughs> I'll just, there we go. And uh, yeah, it has got a lot of underframe detail as well. Well, say underframe de uh, detail just under here. Because there is a pipe which runs right underneath the tank there, which looks rather nice and very iffy to, when it's in the way to when you're trying to remove the body. Yeah, and let's say the front. Also, the uh, buffer beams are detailed as well. Well, they have uh, rivets on there as well. Uh, however, it doesn't have any. The buffers don't have any um, number printed on them, but it does have a number printed on the front of the smoke box. So it's probably why they've not put it there. And, uh, yeah, it looks rather nice, really. Uh, the coal, uh, it's. Not all that bad, really. There's actually enough space in there to add a bit of coal in there yourself. So uh, if you really want your own coal, just put a very thin layer on top, and then it should hide that as well. And riveting on the front, on the uh, top as well. Yeah, it looks rather nice. Hmm, quite impressed with that. I said the main thing which I really don't like about it is this. It's very, uh, well. Uh, we're training a uh, trailer wheel, but uh, yeah, look, but there is one good thing about it is that it does allow you to quickly access the um, was it screws on the bottom there so you can get the body and that one just slightly bouncing. If I remember right, that one's a bit awkward, so you may need to remove the uh, front baby on the front there just to uh, get out that uh, screw. But otherwise, it's not that difficult to DCC. Anyway, I'm going to stop looking at it and uh, <laughs> then actually put it onto the uh, turntable so you can have a better look at it. And I'll tell you a bit more about the prototype. So, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. The London Midland and Scottish Railway Fairburn tank engine is a class of 264 steam locomotive. They were designed by Charles E. Fairburn for the LMS. 277 of these locomotives were built between 1945 and 1951. This design was based on the earlier Stania 264 tank engine, which in itself was derived from Henry Fowler's 264 tank engine. Fairburn modified the design to have a sort of wheelbase, reduced from 16.5 foot to just under 15.5 foot, in allowing curves of five chains to be negotiated. To reduce the locomotive mass per unit length, the overall, overall weight was reduced by 3 long tons and 8 cent weight. It was also the basis for the later BR Standard Class 4 tank. They were used mainly for suburban passenger trains. 41 examples of the class were constructed by Brighton Railway Works for service on the southern region of British Railways in 1945 and 1951, replacing earlier designs. Of these, seven were transferred to the northeastern region between spring 1952 and the end of 1954. The other 34 were exchanged for a like number of London Midland Eden BR Standard Class tank locomotives at the end of 1959. The class was withdrawn between 1961 and 1967. Two of the Brighton built locomotives have survived in preservation. In its early days of preservation, 2085 carried Caledonian Railway blue livery, complete with an oval brass Caledonian number plate. This attractive livery was popular with the public, but strongly divided opinions in the preservation movement for its inaccuracy. At the same time, 2073 was painted in LNWR black re black, which was comparably anachronistic but generated less hostility as it uh, did at least resemble the original livery. Right, here we are with the Furburn tank now on my bottom port layout. Uh, one thing I do have to mention is that I did actually take out the decoder and replaced it with a blanking plate again because uh, the decoder which I used it doesn't like going slow speeds with this particular locomotive. So do take that into account if you um, Happen to buy decoders and chip them all that lot. Do be careful which ones you pick for particular locomotives. But uh, anyway, let's get the slow speed ready. 
So this is backwards because I had it the wrong way around. And that's rather smooth. The problem which I had with the uh, decoder uh, was that it kept doing cogging. And that's stalled. I don't think that's the fault of a locomotive, I think that's just my layout. Come on. Oh, hell if I turn it back up again. Yeah, I'm rather happy with that. That's a send around layout. Now, just to mention, the reason why I don't like the rear trailing wheels as they are is the example of uh, my earlier take of this uh, video was uh, I put it on the outside line for this exact shot and uh, yeah, it derailed itself because uh, it got caught. <laughs> yeah, that seems rather happy. But uh, yeah, it's a rather fiddly system for doing either the front bogey or the rear trailing wheels. And it's just not really necessary in my opinion. Right, I'm just going to test out. That's so what I said, this is where Yep, that seems happy. <laughs> anyway, let's get the test rake up here. And uh, yeah, my test rake is eight Mark 1 coaches, each one weighing roughly 25 grams. So this rake weighs roughly four times, well, it's actually under four times the weight of the Fairburn tank. So uh, yeah, let's get this coupled up. That seems to have worked fine. And as you can see, it's not really struggling whatsoever. And get to this corner where there's a slight incline. It doesn't really seem to have slowed it down whatsoever. Let's do a bit more speed. Ooh. And that seems rather happy, really. And just leave it like that for a minute. But uh, yeah, it seems quite happy with that uh, amount of weight behind it. It doesn't seem to be struggling at all. Maybe a bit more if it went up a uh, much more steeper incline, but uh, just don't take as many coats as really. Right, so about the cut there, I had to cough and get rid of all that lot. But uh, yes, important question now is how much does one of these locomotives cost? It costs between, well, I had to look on a couple of sites but would still have these the current version in stock or at least have the stock price still listed. It's between 120 and 135 uh, in, unless you want the candle, uh, candle only in blue one which could cost up to 300 pound but uh, that's only on eBay, so um, on the normal versions, about 120 135 which is about the same price as you get for a uh, 060 
tender locomotive. So, but considering it's a very large tank engine, it's about comparable really. But um, yeah, do you think it's worth it? If you can get a, well, if you can get a good decoder for it, and if you have a LMS, uh, LMS um, layout, or if you're Southern, because uh, these were also used in the South, I, I would actually recommend getting one of these if you can afford it, really. Um, but have what and also you can find it but uh, yeah I'm quite happy with it still need to find a good decoder for it but uh, I'll do that eventually but uh, it is a good locomotive even though it does cost a fair amount and I still don't like that rear bogey but uh, other than my gripes and how much it costs um, yeah that's it. I'm happy with it and I would recommend it if you really want one anyway I'm gonna close off this video now before my throat goes because I think I'm uh, running, my voice is uh, going <laughs> so uh, yeah let's send the Fairburn on its way and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the video if you like it feel free to comment like and subscribe if you didn't like it I hope you enjoy your day anyway anyway this has been doing some gossip Railworks and uh, yeah hope you enjoy your day and take care see you again next time bye bye now